The year is 1996. A pimple-faced 13-year-old me sits at my family's Pentium computer in the living room, sliding the Nod campaign disc into my disc drive to install what would become the defining game of my childhood. Moving through the campaign, I was asked to steal a particular tank, the Mammoth Tank. Upon seeing the cutscene, I was hooked and in love. Boy, oh boy, was 13-year-old me a real f***ing idiot. Well, let's find out why. Welcome back, Commander. Mammoth Tank waiting orders. Ah, the Mammoth Tank. The quintessential late 90s to early 2000s display of unadulterated pure firepower. It became as iconic as the face of Kane for the CNC franchise, with iterations showing up in every version of the video game all the way up until the end. Four times the size of a main battle tank and packing twin 120mm smoothbore guns and twin tusk missile packs, this thing is able to run over any vehicle smaller than it with contemptuous ease. God, this thing was as sexy as it was dangerous, and I desperately wanted it to be a real tank. I'm going to let you in on a little secret, though. 13-year-old me, he was a fuck idiot. And I'm going to explain why I'm shitting all over 13-year-old me's hopes and dreams. It's called Agent Wisdom. And, well, I've got at least one of those now, anyway. But you know what I don't have? Your subscription. And it'd be really swell if you tapped that old sub button and gave me the old thumbs up. It really does help a guy out. Anyways. So I thought about ignoring the real-world implications of why this tank doesn't cut it. After all, we're all adults here. And we understand why fantasy tanks look cool but are pointless. But is that really why we're here? Oh, God, no. We want to hear the sweet, dulcet tones of my raspy voice. Shh, tear! GDI procurement a brand new one. Isn't that right? Shut the fuck up! No one cares! Up first, let's look at the Mammoth Mark 1 and 3. The OG and its legitimate replacement. The OG was massive on a scale that bordered well beyond ridiculous. Over 13 meters long, 6 wide, and over 5 high. This thing was bigger than the mouse, and realistically, there's real no infrastructure anywhere on Earth that could have supported this thing. It was so damn massive. There's no way it could have crossed any bridges, and there's no way it could have even forded a river. You know why? Because GDI took the time to make its side skirts all the way down to the track bottom, completely negating its ground clearance advantage it would have had, and ensuring that anything that sucked up into the tracks couldn't escape, resulting in tracks just getting blown up. But you know what, I'm really not going to touch on the idiocy that is the four track system because I go over it every time. But the turret, oh dear gods, the turret. My brothers in Christ, it is the best and worst part of this tank and let me break it down for you why. There is no reason anyone actually ever dual wields a gun in real life. It's pointless, a waste of ammo and you won't hit anything. Now scale that up to 120 millimeters and you'll begin to understand what I'm talking about here. All you're going to do is burn up your ammo and uh, scaling that up to 120 millimeters, you're gonna run out of shells real quick. Now, if you think I'm full of shit, shoulder two rifles, take aim with both your eyes open, and try and hit a target in the bullseye. I freaking guarantee you can't, and if you can do it on video, I will eat the words of my script live on video, if you can prove you did it. You, the reason you can't and won't though, it's called parallax. To mount two main guns on a turret would require the gunner to shift aim between shots, and in battle, seconds count. Believe it or not, they do. Even with the ridiculous level of armor that this thing has, it's a fatal flaw. And adding on to that, replacing the recuperators for the gun on the outside of the barrel, that's just ridiculous in a way I can't even begin to comprehend. If you're trying to understand what I mean here, let's place the main component of one of the gun's operational functions outside of the tank where it can be easily damaged. There's a reason we put these inside the tank turret. It's generally why our tank turrets are so long. But I'm just saying here. Anyway, I really can't find fault with the missile packs. They're pretty awesome, but kind of in placing them in an exposed spot, well, that's kind of dumb. Even the Bradley and even the BMPT Terminator, whatever the crap those stupid Russians call it, sucks their missiles into a little armored slot when they're not in use. But they solved this problem in the Mark III, so it's really not that bad of an issue. In the end, the Mark I and III are the living embodiment of the look cool factor in tanks while playing exactly zero heed to physics or practicality. Now let's look at the Mark II.
Let's stop looking at the Mark II. This thing makes the AT-AT look like the pinnacle of military technology. And what the fuck, GDI? I get the mech war was huge during the 90s, but this is just atrocious. And we're not going to discuss anything beyond CNC3, because nothing came after it. At all. Anyway, y'all, that's all I'm going to ramble on this time. If you enjoyed this content, uh, let me know in the comments down below. Hit that sub button again. Hit that thumbs up. Let me know in the comments what you want to see next. And uh, if you hit that notification bell, you might get notified when we split build the next video, when I turn up the heat with flame tanks. Hey, guys, I'll see you in the next battlefield.